Oh my guys. Well, it is a hot, sticky day here. In the first week of spring here in Doomsday Trailer in Dunnellan, Florida. As I start thinking about plans to head back north here on this hot, sticky. It is a Tuesday, March 26th. 2024 and since it's too hot and muggy to be out there uh planet nibbling uh just thought i i i i know how fascinated you guys are with uh this old doomers florida real estate investing stories but uh i'm actually going to tell the uh kind of go back to the infamous ham sandwich story from 1989. But anyway, what's going on, so yesterday, finally, now, that all of this last minute bullshit with this title company, blah, 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 dealing with that nasty little bitch at the title company, driving fucking back down there halfway across the state of Florida, blah, blah, blah. We have 100% of our ducks in a row. Uh, everything is there. We're just waiting for the seller to, uh, you know, to sign his documents. Soon as the fucking seller signs his documents, he gets his money, and we get the deed to to the property. So uh, I, I talked to this fellow last night at seven o'clock. Um, I, I, I called the seller, talked to a really nice guy, and he had told me earlier in the day that he was not feeling good, that he could tell that he was getting sick and so at seven o'clock last night, you know, we're talking and, and I said, well, Frank, I, I said, everything is there uh, and you're ready to sign off. And so he's going, well, Sam, you know, I've been going through all this stuff. I have done every single thing that I can do on the computer. He goes, but I have to uh, get this one thing uh, notarized that I have to sign this one document uh, in, in front of a notary, you know, literally on a piece of paper. And, and I'm sitting there, the, the clueless moron that I am, not even realize he was talking about the fucking deed that you can do every single thing now on uh, on computer. Uh, you can do everything without ever setting foot in a damn title company except one thing you have to do. And that is you have to get a blue pen and in front of not one but two notaries witnessing you doing this, you have to sign the deed over to the new buyer. So uh, the seller says... I have got to do this shit in person tomorrow. And uh, I have done everything else there waiting for one signature. Well, two, he and his wife. So he goes, I will get this done tomorrow. And I said, could you please just call me when, uh, when, when you have uh, signed that deed and picked up your money? Uh, and he said, no problem. So that was our conversation at, at, uh, at, at uh, 7 o'clock last night. So imagine my surprise today when I get a call from the fucking title company. Good morning, Mr. Mitchell. How are you today? And, and, and I said, lady... Uh, I said, I will be just fine when you tell me that this deal has closed. And she goes, I wish I could, Sam. I wish I could tell you that. But uh, I, I just talked to the seller uh, look, looking for that deed, and he told me that he is so sick he cannot get out of bed. 
that uh, he, he is lying flat on his back in bed. Uh, apologize. Everyone's apologizing. He is apologizing profusely to her, uh, apologizing profusely to me. He has done all he can do, but he simply does not have the physical strength to get his ass out of that goddamn bed, get dressed, get down to a title company, pick up a fucking blue pen, uh, and sign his goddamn name to a piece of paper. Doesn't have it in him. Uh, he hopes that uh, that he uh, is, is going to be up to doing it by Friday. That we will close uh, this week, and, and that he uh, so he doesn't know if he has uh, the flu, if he has goddamn corona panic. So uh, here I am with my cellar. Uh, on, on his goddamn deathbed, probably from fucking corona panic, uh, just to add, add the layers and layers uh, of sick, twisted irony to, to the slam dunk, uh, all cash, uh, write a check transaction and wrap this up, now has been completely put on fucking ice uh, for, for the next 72 hours. Of course, I wasn't happy to hear this, but of course, you know, as she pointed out, well, you know, the contract date is April 1st, uh, which is Monday, and this will be uh, at the absolute latest, Sam. Uh, this contract will close, and you will own that property by 5 p.m. on Monday, April 1st, which, of course, is April Fool's Day. Uh, something about taking title to a new piece of property on April Fool's Day has me a little bit concerned. But anyway, so she's like, what, what the hell can happen? Everything is done. What, you know, there's nothing to worry about her, Sam. Uh, find something else to do with your damn life. What, what else can happen here? Well... Uh, th this is uh, this is one idea of what can happen. So I have I've told this story before on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I'm sure uh, now, which literally surrounds the infamous ham sandwich episode of October 11th, 1989, uh, which I've told four or five times. I'm not going to retell the uh, the infamous ham sandwich in, uh, incident when my seven-year marriage uh, was destroyed over a ham sandwich. Well, it wasn't destroyed. It was put out of its misery. So that was October 11th, 1989, is when my late, great, dear, sweet ex-wife and I parted company in Sweet Home, Oregon. Sweet Home, Oregon, uh, where uh, she and I had moved to this little small town in Oregon, you know, to try to simplify our lives and, uh, you, you, you know, and work on the marriage and get a new project we could work on. So we bought this old house on... Uh, on 13 acres of land, this beautiful old farmhouse, big barn, little pond on it, uh, a, a, an apple orchard, a cherry orchard, this beautiful place, going to save our marriage in Sweet Home, Oregon. Uh, so we had cash to uh, buy the place, but the thing about it was our cash was tied up in the CDs. This is when CDs were actually, there really was a day, uh, in 1989, uh, that CDs were paying over 9%, just a regular six-month CD. So we had uh, a $106,000 CD uh, from our sale of our house in Santa Cruz, California that we had 
we had sold uh, the spring before, taken the $106,000 and put it in a six-month CD uh, to get that 9% interest while we were shopping for a new house and, and you know up in Oregon so it gave us plenty of time so uh, we we found the house uh, we fell in love with it we moved into it we were already painted the house but doing all of this work on it waiting around for this CD to clear this $106,000 CD to clear which was scheduled to clear on October 10th October 10th 1989 so uh, it was $79,000 cash offer so I had promised this seller that on October 10th 1989 that uh, I was going to write well my dear sweet ex-wife and I, we were going to write him a check for $79,000 in cash and he was going to sign the deed over to the farm on October 10th. And, and we moved to the house. We've been living in the fucking house for four months. So, you, you know, it's getting closer and closer and closer to the date. So, you know, I call the guy, uh, Hatton Herman. So I, I call the guy on October 9th. And go, brother, I, I, I said, you do know that this CD matures tomorrow. And I have a check for $79,000 with your name on it. So where do you want to get together tomorrow? Meaning October 10th, 1989. So uh, my, my dear sweet wife and I, uh, can sign this check over to you and you can have your $79,000 and he just goes oh you know Sam I've got a lot of stuff uh, uh, on, on my docket can we make it October 12th can uh, I meet up with you and Caroline on October 12th and you can just give me the money then and I said, and I kind of laughed uh, and, and said, well, you, 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 you know, you've got $79,000 waiting for you tomorrow. Uh, and he goes, oh, he, he goes, no problem. Uh, I can live without the $79,000. So we made uh, an appointment to meet for lunch on October 12th, uh, 1989. And uh, my dear sweet ex-wife and I were going to give this man a $79,000 check. Uh, and uh, he was going to sign the deed uh, over to you. He was going to sign the deed, give us a signed deed. We were going to give him $79,000. That was the plan that uh, we made on, uh, on the evening of October 9th. Well... <laughs> we all know what happened on uh, 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 the morning of October 11th, uh, 1989 is when uh, the, uh, my, my seven years of, uh, of uh, domestic bliss with uh, that little uh, Hitler youth uh, that, that I had married came to a crashing halt over a ham sandwich and since the uh, CD had cleared and it was now uh, I just got in the goddamn car I drove up to the bank I took fifty three thousand dollars in cash uh, out of the bank in Sweet Home Oregon and drove off into the night and drove to Costa Rica and uh, came back next spring and I and I noticed when I got back from uh, Costa Rica I went up there uh, in May to see if there was anything left on that property that I could scrounge and saw the for sale sign still sitting there uh, six months later he still had not uh, <laughs> he, he still <laughs> 
he still had not sold that house. And uh, anyway, now I did lose the thousand dollar deposit, of course. I mean that was fair. Uh, so I guess that ham sandwich uh, did cost me a thousand dollars. It cost me my marriage and uh, the thousand dollars. I don't miss the I don't miss the marriage, but I'm sure I could have used that thousand that thousand dollars. But but I but I guarantee you this. I I I. I can make one unequivocal statement that if that man ever gets a call from somebody saying, Brother, I have a check for $79,000 with your name on it uh, to give to you. Uh, I guarantee you that man is going to say, oh, don't worry about it, just wait a couple of days. And, and I will make the same advice to you that if ever anybody calls you and tells you, I have a check, well, here in Florida for $26,000, or I have a check for $79,000, or fuck it, if I have a check for you for $500, the answer to the person calling you with that information is when and where can we meet up. I don't give a fuck what you have going on in your life. I don't give a fuck how sick you are. If you get a phone call, uh, from a person, from a title company, whatever, saying, I have a check for you for somewhere between $26,000 and $79,000, and all you need to do is come down here, sign your name, and pick it up, and put $79,000 in your pocket. Dude, drop whatever the fuck you're doing. I don't care if you're having a freeway with two 19-year-old twin, identical twin sisters. Okay, tell the girls, I'm sorry, darlings, we're going to have to get back to this later. I've got something a little more important to do than having a three-way with the two of you. You drop everything you're going to do. I... I, I <laughs> I would just love to hear that man, uh, hear his version of the story when he called, uh, uh, when he called on October 12th and my, and my dear sweet uh, wife answered the phone and told him that he does not have a check for $79,000 waiting for him. <laughs> anyway, guys, what can happen? No, it, it was at the same point last year in this no-brainer all-cash transaction for this goddamn vacant lot down here where some fucking bullshit, absolute bullshit, uh, that this title company came up with fucked us out of that deal. It just fucked me out of 10000 just like that. Uh, some fucking bullshit at the very last second. Real estate deals are not over until the deed is signed in blue ink in front of two notaries and technically it's not officially over until the deed is recorded in the courthouse. It could still fuck up and don't think it hasn't happened before and won't happen again. Uh, I, I just hope uh, some fucking bullshit uh, isn't going to happen. Like, this dude died. And if this fucking dude dies of, of corona panic, uh, all of this fucking work uh, going down the goddamn toilet. Anyway, the life of a real estate investor... Looking like it's gonna rain. I gotta get out of here and go unload some dead cypress trees off the back of my gas sucking truck.
while I still can. My guys.